to speak to this motion. Um, following your guidance, Mr. Speaker, that I speak last. Mr. Speaker, I ask that you direct. Okay, order, order, senators. Let us let us listen to Senator Sakaja. Remember, we have to vote. Please, okay, Senator Sakaja. Um, Mr. Speaker, for the past two days, as I've sat here. I have really uh, held myself together, not to speak. Because you know, Mr. Speaker, I speak a lot in this house. But I, I acknowledge the tradition of this house. Mr. Speaker, the tradition of this house holds that the senator of the Order, county... senators, consult in law. Why are you not listening to the senator Nairobi? That's just confirming that we are tired. So let us listen to the senator... Vulnerable. Mr. Speaker, uh, what I'm saying is that the, tr the tradition of this house has been that the senator of the county in question, when there is an impeachment, ideally keeps quiet. And Mr. Speaker, ideally, when a vote comes, they should uh, normally abstain unless it is a casting vote. And Mr. Speaker, that is exactly what I'm going to do today. But Mr. Speaker, allow me to just to give some uh, you know, history. Number one, I am privileged and I'm honored to be the one member in this house elected by Nairobians representing 4.3 million people of this county and who has sworn an oath, an oath to protect the interests of the people of Nairobi and to protect the interests of the Nairobi County government. And Mr. Speaker, Based on that oath, that solemn oath that we all took, I have numerously brought statements, questions, and I've raised issues to do with Nairobi County in this house. Mr. Speaker, without blowing any trumpet, and I'm sure, you, and I know you said that uh, sometimes you blow your own if it's complicated. I think of all senators concerning their own county, I brought the most issues. In fact, it is almost poetic that last year, a time like this, and I shared this on our group recently. I brought a request for a special sitting to discuss Nairobi County because at that time my governor had a case and those, those issues, you remember, and the, the then leader of majority refused to, <laughs> to, to call a special sitting. A year later, we we're discussing an impeachment. Mr. Speaker, this city of Nairobi is indeed literally the hub of this continent in terms of economic opportunities. Nairobi ideally should be Africa's New York. Mr. Speaker, if you look at the geopolitics of our region, of, our, of, of this continent, if you go to the west, Nigeria, which is just mineral-based, investors don't want to go there. If you look at the south, it is imploding. Look at what's happening in Ethiopia. The frontier for the economic development of this continent is Nairobi. And that is why the issues of Nairobi must be taken seriously, and we must look at them keenly. Mr. Speaker, I acknowledge, and I want to say in front of everyone, because, Mr. Speaker, I always put my cards on the table. Since 2017, of course, we campaigned together with the governor. We worked together initially. And, of course, I think it is not lost to anyone that we've also had our run-ins. We've not seen eye to eye on a number of issues. And, Mr. Speaker, I insisted that every time I've brought a question of oversight, it has not been about personal interest, it has not been about political contest, it's about the interests of the people of Nairobi, and I continue to do that. Mr. Speaker, when the governor's impeachment came, many people, including media houses, MCAs, uh, different actors, asked me to comment about it, but I believe in grace, such that it is wrong to kick someone on his down. And that is why I have resisted to gleefully dance on anybody's grave. I have resisted the urge to celebrate, but to empathize with the people of Nairobi. And it is for that reason, Mr. Speaker, that for the last two days, and in fact for the last months that he's been going through this, I have offered an ear to him, and I have offered an ear also to those who accuse him. Because at the end of the day, Mr. Speaker, I am the father of devolution in this county. I am the senator of Nairobi. Whichever way it goes, the Senate will speak. And when the Senate speaks, that voice will be heard. 
I see the need for leadership at this time. Because, Mr. Speaker, I will have to, as a senator, in case this Senate decides to impeach the governor of Nairobi, Mr. Speaker, we will need to provide leadership because it will be uncertain times. In case this House does not impeach the governor, there is need for reconciliation. Mr. Speaker, when I look at the gallery, I feel bad. Because on one side, I see MCAs opposed to the governor. On another side, I see, I see MCAs supporting the governor. We have all been elected by the same people. If we keep playing to the parochial politics of political, you know, whatever it may be, the person who suffers is that woman in Mutwini, it is that cobbler in Kayole, it is that common person who we fight for every day in this house. And so we need to be reconciled. And that role must still be played. So, Mr. Speaker, I want to urge my colleagues, as you make your decision, which will be respected, let us look at the depth of the issues. Let us look at justice, let us look at truth, and let us look at the best interest of the county of Nairobi. And Mr. Speaker, we shall abide by the decision that is made. Even once it is made, Mr. Speaker, I will still urge this House to give clarity to the issues of intergovernmental transfers. Because, Mr. Speaker, I supported the transfer functions, and I still support it, because at that point, we know what the court said about a, uh, about a governor facing charges. There is a need for that clarity as to how we actualize, whether it is the NMS or whatever other entity. And whoever becomes governor of Nairobi in 2022 or later, or whenever, or even next, will have the same challenges. When Governor Kidero was governor, myself and Governor Sonko said things about him that he is going through today. This city cannot be about individuals. Mr. Speaker, I want to thank Senator Orengo and Senator Mutula and Senator Wetangula because they stood with me. When BBI document was released, the functions of Nairobi had been transferred permanently away from Nairobi. Mr. Speaker, we pleaded with the President and with the former Prime Minister and these three members of mine, Mr. Speaker, and I thank them, and the people of Nairobi, thank you. At that time, I fought alone. My MPs didn't support that. They said, no, comma, should be changed, no full stop. But I said, the person in Nairobi, Article 1 says that the sovereign power is with the people and it's exercised at the national level and at the county level. The people of Nairobi are going to be disenfranchised not to exercise that power at the county level. I'm glad that the document that we have now, Nairobi remains a county. As I conclude, I want to give Nairobians hope. I know Francis Bacon once said that hope is a bad breakfast but a good supper. But I want to give the people of Nairobi and the people of Kenya hope that Nairobi can work as a county. Nairobi can thrive as a county. And when Nairobi works, all of your counties will be able to work. Please support Nairobi County. And to the governor of Nairobi, my friend, whom we've had a love-hate relationship, I don't know where the scales lie, whether it is more love or more hate, but Mr. Speaker is a brother. I want to give him the words of William Penn. No throne, no thorns, no throne. No cross, no crown. No girl, no glory. Senators, make a judicious decision. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Okay, hon honorable, honorable senators. Honorable Senator, order, 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 order. Order, order, order.